You are watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vibration and waves. The topic of this video is vibrating objects, and we want to know what are the fundamental features of a vibrating object, and why does a vibrating object return to its original position over and over again? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. A bobblehead doll teaches us a lot about the physics of vibrating objects. The head of the doll typically assumes a fixed resting position until it's pushed or pulled or somehow disturbed from that resting position. And once it is, it begins doing what I call the back and forth. That is, it begins to move from one side to the other side, back and forth, over and over again. We refer to this as the wiggles. But referring to it as the wiggles or the back and forth is not exactly technical language. It's more appropriate to describe the head of the bobblehead dial as vibrating or oscillating about a fixed position. In fact, that's what vibrational motion is and how it differs from other forms of motion. Oftentimes, when you give an object like a toy car a push, it will move from one position to another position. That's not vibrational motion. That's translational motion. But the head of a bobblehead dial stays put, only vibrating side to side about that fixed position. Over the course of time, we would notice that the vibrations begin to lessen more and more due to the interaction of that vibrating object with the environment resulting in forces such as friction or air resistance. We refer to this as damping and we'll have more to say about it in a future slide. A bobblehead doll is not the only example of a vibrating object. There's many objects that are set into vibrational motion once they're pushed, pulled, or somehow disturbed. A mass on the end of the spring is one such example, as is a mass on the end of a spring known as a pendulum. We will give extensive treatment to these two types of motion in other videos in this tutorial se series. The tines of a tuning fork will be set into vibrational motion if they're somehow struck or disturbed, as is the flag waving in the wind. All objects that undergo vibrational motion have one thing in common. The object is doing the back and forth, vibrating about a fixed position. A vibrating object possesses mechanical energy. The amount of mechanical energy it possesses depends upon the amplitude of its vibrations. An object that's vibrating back and forth with a large amplitude of vibration has a large amount of mechanical energy, and an object that vibrates back and forth with a small amplitude of vibration has a small amount of mechanical energy. Over the course of time, the vibrating object interacts with its surroundings through friction, air resistance, and other forces. This interaction results in the dissipation of energy to the surroundings. As energy is gradually lost to the surroundings, the amplitude of the vibration of the object gradually decreases until finally it eventually stops vibrating altogether, a sign that the mechanical energy has been fully dissipated. This gradual lessening of the amount of amplitude of vibration of an object is what is referred to as damping. If you were to push a toy car and set it into motion, that toy car would begin moving forward, and the forward motion would continue even after the push ceases. This is translational motion that results in the object moving from one location to another location some distance away. The life of a vibrating object is considerably different, because once you push or disturb the object from its original resting position, there is a restoring force that acts upon that object to slow it down and return it back to its original resting position. The restoring force is represented by a red arrow on the above animation. There's two things that we'll notice about this restoring force. The first is that the strength of the force depends upon how far the vibrating object is from its resting position. The farther away the object gets from its resting position, the stronger the force, and the closer it is to the resting position, the weaker the force. The second thing we'll notice is that the restoring force is always directed back towards the resting position. Even when the bobblehead dial vibrates past the resting position, we'll notice the restoring force changes its direction and resists the wayward motion of that bobblehead dial, slowing it down and moving it back towards its resting position. Position. It's this restoring force that makes vibration possible, the vibration of an object about a fixed position. Our study of vibrational motion will eventually lead us to a study of wave motion, and you might be wondering, well, how are the two ever connected? 
Well, I'm going to introduce the idea now and detail it later in a video called The Nature of a Wave. When you have a vibrating object, you have a single wiggler, an object that is wiggling back and forth over the course of time. But when you have a wave, you have a collection of interdependent wigglers. You have a wiggle in time that extends itself through space because you have a multiple number of wigglers. To illustrate this, consider the animation here. And suppose that that first object is the coil of a snakey, and I take it with my hand, and I vibrate it up and down. As it vibrates up and down, it will cause the second coil to vibrate up and down, which will cause the third coil to vibrate up and down, the fourth coil to vibrate up and down, and so on and so forth. What you have is a collection of interdependent wigglers, a wiggle in time that extends itself through space. You can convince yourself of this if you just focus on one of the coils or one of the objects in the animation, like the one denoted by this blue arrow, and watch what that object does. It's simply doing the back and forth, a wiggle in time. But because these wigglers are interdependent, we have a wiggle in time extended through space. It's at this time in every video that I like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out with that, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. There are a couple of resources on our website that would be good follow-up steps to this video, and I've left links to each of them in the description section of this video. First, there is a simulation known as the Vibrating Mass on a Spring and a tutorial page called Vibrating Objects. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.